Hey guys, welcome back to my backyard. So in my recent video that I posted talking about fruit trees, which I don't recommend growing in Florida here, uh, one of them was the Jabuticaba, which is actually contrary to what some other people might say because it's a pretty popular tree that people grow here when they're looking for exotic fruit trees. But I've had some trouble with mine, so I want to kind of show you what's been happening to it and why I included it on this list. But a little spoiler at the end, it's actually been doing a lot better the past uh, like month or two after I made a big change to it. So I'll show you what I did and how it's doing better. So let's go back to November 2020 and where the story begins. So I bought this tree online from Everglades Farm in November 2020, so just about four years ago. It was supposed to be a Grimal variety, but after I posted pictures on Facebook groups, most people said it wasn't a Grimal and it was likely a Sabara. So now I don't really know for sure what it is. But regardless, it came in the box looking great. It was so bushy and full of nice green leaves. I planted it in the ground in the back of my yard where it got full sun all day, which now looking back, it was probably a bad idea. Over the next year, it really struggled. The leaves were pretty much all brown and crusty and the tree just never looked healthy. It also got these strange holes in the leaves, which I'm not sure what was causing them. Now that I've read up on them more, Jabuticabas are native to the Amazon jungles where they grow as large bushes, so they are acclimated to the understory and therefore full sunlight basically burns them. They also like the rich, moist, acidic soil of the jungle, which is the exact opposite of the nutrient-deficient sand we have here in South Florida. So after a year in the ground, I decided to dig it up and put it back in a pot with nice, rich potting soil, and I also put it on the side of my patio where it only received about a half day's direct sun. This all made it really thrive. I kept it in a pot for the next two and a half years where it was constantly putting out nice new green leaves. I was getting worried about keeping it in a pot long term, so about six months ago I decided to put it back in the ground. This time I put it on the side of my yard up against the tall ficus hedges and behind my young coconut cream mango tree. I expected it to get partial sun next to the ficus hedges and eventually when the mango tree grows bigger. But soon after, my neighbor and I decided to replace the ficus hedges with new clusia hedges, which put the jabuticaba back in full light. It apparently didn't like that as it started struggling again. I left it there for the next six months before deciding to move it yet again. This time I moved it to the side of my house where it will indefinitely only get a few hours of direct sunlight a day. Here it is two weeks after I planted it. You can see it's already starting to put out some nice growth. It's already looking a lot better than it was uh, back over in my yard. I put a whole lot of mulch down and I uh, finished up my soil acidifier bag that I've been using for a while. So I think it's in a good place right now looking nice. I think I'm going to do a pruning of it. And here it is about uh, five weeks after I planted it. It's looking really nice now. It's so really liking this spot with just a couple hours of direct sunlight a day. Lots of new growth coming out, looking healthy. The bark is peeling, which is a good sign. 
Supposedly the bark peels on a healthy Jabba de Kaba like this. So I really like how it's looking now. I think it's in a good spot here. I like having a tree of this size next to my house here. And I think the tree's gonna like it, so I'm gonna keep it here and maybe I'll get fruit one of these days. We'll see what happens. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.